lifted you and ask you now to shine. I will not abandon you. All my promises are true. You are gifted, called, and chosen. You are mine. I will help you learn my name as you go. Read it written in my people. Help them grow. Pour the water in my name. Speak the word your soul can claim. Offer Jesus' body given long ago. I know you will need my touch as you go. Feel it pulsing in creation's ebb and flow. Like the woman reaching out, choosing faith in spite of doubt. Hold the hem of Jesus' robe, then let it go. Thank you, Ralph. And welcome to St. Andrew's United Church, uh, a community of faith right here in Sudbury, Ontario, in Canada. Now, on the graphic that you will see at this moment, you will see a photo of a very proud Mohammed Karkouz, who is graduating from high school and has the presence of his very special friends from St. Andrews, Jane and Joyce. Mohammed received a very special bursary, an award for students who overcome significant obstacles in order to complete their high school diploma. So from St. Andrews, a hearty congratulations, Mohammed, and to all the Karkus family. I'm gonna change tone here a little bit. Uh, we have just as we're making this uh, worship, we're creating this worship, we have found out uh, that there has been yet another discovery. So first, on the uh, Tecumloops de Swahmu, uh, First Nation in Kamloops, there was such a horrific discovery of many, many unmarked graves of children who were in the residential school there. Now we've just discovered in Saskatchewan, on traditional land of the Cowessis First Nation, even more uh, unmarked graves. So I want to say that my heart, and I am sure that many or all of us in churches, our hearts are broken with First Nations brothers and sisters across this country as more and more uh, uncoveries, un uncovering of evidence of the implication of our church in residential schools uh, are discovered. As we are approaching Canada Day, I am inviting you, Christians everywhere, to give thanks for Canada, but may we take this day, Canada Day, to learn the real history, a history that I didn't learn about, and a history that I'll point out to you that um, our public education curriculum in Ontario still does not include the truth of this history uh, with First Nations and colonial history. This is a beautiful land. Let us know our history of this land, including the unsettling details about our colonial past. And I'm going to say it, my settler ancestors' involvement in it. Okay. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome. We love to have you. We are a vibrant community of faith, even as we still cannot uh, physically be together. There are many things going on at St. Andrews. I hope that you will find out what's going on. At the end of this video, you will see different ways to contact us. There's a phone number for our office hours, for Allison, an email, a Facebook uh, address, as well as our website address please reach out to us. We would love to hear from you and help you to join and connect with us meaningfully. I want to extend to you a special invitation immediately after what would normally be our service. So if you're joining us at 1030, 
uh, opening your worship service at 1130 we are going to have a virtual picnic and we hope that all of you will join with us now the link got sent out in the news this past week so please um, go back to the news if you hadn't read about it there is a link there for the zoom if you don't have the link please reach out to Diane. You'll see her email contact at the end of this service. Please send her an email and she will send you a link. We are gonna have lots of fun. So I hope you'll join us 11.30 on Sunday, June the 27th. All right, lots going on, a lot in our world and our country. Let's take a moment and center ourselves, breathe, and just feel grounded in the grace of God on this sacred ground. The light is all around us. A sign of the season for us as northerners, light. Hallelujah, longest days of the year, and happy solstice, belatedly, to everyone. The flame of this Christ candle reminds us of the beauty and presence of the light that paints the sky, bathes the land, and brightens our path. Thanks be to our creator uh, for fire and sun, and for flame, and for symbol. Here we are, worshiping on the traditional territory of the First Peoples. Across Turtle Island, treaties were made between colonizers and those who had lived on this land for millennia. Here at St. Andrews, we give thanks uh, for the Wanapite First Nation and the Atikamekshing Anishinaabek, who call this territory home. We have a responsibility that's implied by those ancient treaties. We have a responsibility to share in the caretaking and look after this land with indigenous neighbors. We give thanks for the current and historic contributions of the First Nations and Métis peoples. May we journey together towards reconciliation. Will you join with me in the call to worship. It is responsive, your words are on the screen. We come with all our hopes and longings. We gather in worship, God. We open our hearts to you. We come to find rest for our souls. We, we gather, gather in, in worship, worship God. God. We, we seek, seek your grace. grace. We come with all our disappointments and dreams. We, we gather, gather in, in worship, worship God. God. We, we seek, seek your, your spirit, spirit that enlivens dreams. dreams. We come to gain strength for our lives. We, we gather, gather here, here to worship you, you God. God. Let us pray. God of all our longings, you are the fire that kindles our hearts with hope and possibility. You fill us with desire for life and you hear our voices, whether we shout for joy or cry out in sorrow. We trust in you and give thanks for your presence in all the stages of our lives. Help us to be open to the movement of your Holy Spirit in your world. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. of God's new creation. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Have you ever felt desperation? 
Now, what I mean by that is something happens that you might lose something very special to you. You're willing to do anything, absolutely anything and everything to save it. Have you ever felt that way? We know that there are many people in our world who feel that way every day. They're desperate because they don't have enough food, they're not safe, they don't have water. Well, today's story, today's Bible story in this, in this worship is about a woman. Now, the storyteller doesn't give her a name. So I am gonna give her a name. I'm imagining her to be Grace. Now, Grace has a condition where she is losing a lot of blood. Most of us know that we need blood to survive. <clears throat> well, because she's losing blood all the time, she's sick, and the way things worked in her world back in those long, long ago times, people would have avoided her. They would actually not speak to her because they felt that she was sick and they would get sick. She would have been very lonely and tired and desperate. Well, she heard that this guy named Jesus was coming around, and so she was going to reach out and take a big risk. So she came into a very busy marketplace where Jesus was, and people could have done terrible things to her. Because she was considered impure, um, she could have been harmed, put in jail, or maybe even killed. She took a great risk, and she reached out and touched Jesus' clothes. Now, what is most amazing about this story is how Jesus reacts. You see, he had his people around him that knew him, and they had a plan for the day. Well, this was not part of the plan. Someone had touched him, he knew it, and he said to his friends, I want you to find where that person is that touched me. Are you crazy, Jesus, they said? No, I need to know. She came forward and spoke to him. And what was so beautiful was Jesus looking at her and calling her daughter. He gave her a name. He knew her. Now, sometimes we have to risk everything for faith and for love. It might be your mom or dad who dropped their smartphone in the pool. Watch your mom and dad jump into the pool or your aunt or uncle or grandfather watch them jump to go get it. Now, what about you in a very serious way? What would you risk everything for? What is so important to you? Is it love? Maybe it's someone who's very sick and you sit by their side and hold their hand and pray for them. Maybe you want them to get better. It is a beautiful kind of risk. Out of love and care, that woman took it and so did Jesus. God noticed her. Amen. I am a child of God. I am a glimpse of God's new creation. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Today's gospel story by the writer Mark, chapter 5, verses 25 through 34. This is a story celebrating God's healing spirit that reconnects the most vulnerable with community. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth.
He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Let us pray. God of fresh starts and new beginnings, God of hope and promise, flesh and spirit entwined to become one with you in Christ. Increase our depth of understanding as we receive the words of scripture this day. God of eternal life, teach us to walk in the footsteps and spirit of Jesus, which so many ancestors have traveled before us. Amen. My beloved granddaughter, Sarah. I am writing this letter to you today because I know that my time on this earth is quickly coming to a close. Soon, I will leave to join your grandfather in the heavenly place that our Lord has prepared for us. My Sarah, as I rest here, I remember the many evenings that we sat outside, you and I, after our chores. We would look up as God painted the sky with the glorious colors and know that he was near. During these precious moments, my Sarah, I told you all of the stories that I knew about Jesus our Lord, how he walked from village to village, teaching, reaching out, touching, healing, and mostly showing us how to live like him with justice and compassion for all. As you listen to me, I also listen to others, people who had seen and heard him and those who had heard about him. Once or twice, I even met his special friends, those that he called his disciples as they came through our village. I remember I cried with sorrow at his death, but I knew that he would rise as he had said. And when I was ready, one of his disciples, I forget his name, who had passed through here, baptized me, just as Jesus himself had been baptized. And so, Sarah, I watched you grow and mature into the lovely young woman you are today, a young woman who also came to love and accept Jesus as your Lord, too. But, Sarah, I never told you the story of that one unforgettable day that I actually met him and how that changed my life forever. You were always asking me, Grandmother, why are your eyes so full of light? Even when you are sad, like when you lost grandfather, your eyes still have a light in them. Why? I will tell you of how that light was placed there. As a young woman, just about your age, I became very ill with a bleeding disease. People rejected me. They called me unclean. Some even went so far as to say that I was possessed by evil. I became a recluse, sad, alone. I had no friends. Only my parents stood by me and they tried to show me that I was still of some value. I tried everything that I thought would help, including sending many prayers to our God in heaven, but nothing helped. I felt defeated and vulnerable, but you know how stubborn I can be. Part of me just would not give up without an answer, and I would take one last chance. I had heard of a preacher, a healer, who was performing many miracles. I would risk everything on that one last opportunity and tiny hope, thinking that somehow he might help me. That day, I learned that Jesus was coming to our village by boat. The crowds were so thick and very frenzied, I could lose myself in them and never be seen. I just wanted my chance to get close to him because I knew he would never come to me, not me, a woman and untouchable. But somehow, through all that pushing and jostling, I found myself right behind him. I remember seeing his robe. It seemed as if it shone with a radiance that I had never seen before. And something deep inside me urged me to go forward, 
Do I dare? I'm so afraid. I'm trembling in fear, but yes, I will. I reached forward very, very gently, and I touched the hem of his robe. And at that moment, the world stood still for me. I was changed. I knew I was healed. So now if I could only get out, steal away to ponder this amazing happening. But no, he turns and he looks right at me out of hundreds of eyes, his find mine. I'm struck, I'm unable to move. I'm held captive in those eyes in which I see my whole life changing. What will happen? Will he shun me, send me away? maybe even stole me. You know, it doesn't matter. I must stay. And he speaks right to me. Who touched me? Who touched my clothing? Then in a moment, I find myself kneeling before him, pouring out to him my soul's sorrow. As I finish my story, I know I need to see those eyes one more time. Timidly yet trustingly, I look. I see his eyes filled with compassion and love for me. And then I hear a voice, the voice that no other has, saying, Daughter, your faith is great. You are healed. Live well and be blessed. He turns and walks away, and the crowds follow him. And I rise with strength and dignity because, Sarah, not only did he heal my body, but he healed my heart and my soul as well. He did not touch me, but he saw me. He really saw me, and he recognized me. And in that one glance, he knew all that I was and all that I could come to be. His compassion infused every part of my being. I knew I was precious, I was loved and I belonged to him. Well, Sarah, I have no idea how I got home that day. Did I run? Did I jump? Did I laugh? And I cried? I probably did all of these. I don't really know. Because my life became so different then. Not always easy, because I had to forgive all those who had hurt and rejected me. And again, you know how stubborn I am. But because I had been touched by him, I knew I needed to follow his teachings, even the difficult ones. Life moved on. I blossomed into a strong, confident woman because I always remembered that I was precious and loved. And I wanted only to love him back and to serve his people so they could know what I knew. You see, Sarah, Jesus placed that light in my eyes. It's been there ever since. And do you know, it is in your eyes also. The rest of the story is familiar to you. You know how I met a young sheep herder, Jacob, how we both wanted to follow the master and learn his ways. We married, had children, and then yes, you came to bless us even more. So Sarah, as I leave you, I give you one final message. You are never alone. He walks beside you, guiding you, loving you, even in darkness and sorrow. So trust him, our Lord of love, gentleness, and compassion. Know how much he loves you, as do I. And when and if you are ever lonely or lost, my Sarah, look into the water. There you will see the beautiful light in your eyes. His light, mine and yours, joining together, sending his brilliance in ripples that can touch the whole world. Be happy, my precious Sarah. Live and be blessed. Your grandmother, Esther. Many in our world who feel unseen Certainly that was the case for the outcasts and the sick and people called impure in Jesus' time. We felt that 
this previously unnamed woman deserved to have some flesh and some blood and a story attached to her. And so, thank you, Suzanne Nikolchuk, for your great uh, message today. And I'm wondering, as we close this message time, how many heroes there are in our world today? Women, children, people who don't have pedestals or pulpits to speak from and to be seen from. This week's worship, I think, is about bravery and about faith. In desperation, nothing to lose, that woman took a great risk. God enfleshed in Jesus, uh, a very annoying, high-profile person to his handlers. I'm going to call uh, the disciples as handlers at a moment like this where they want to keep moving them along. But he was determined to stay in the present moment. He says, no, someone touched me. I need to see them. I invite you this week to see, to see. By that I mean to notice, to intentionally look for the people who typically you might not pay attention to. There are so many in this busy life that we miss. Driving down the street, notice the alleyways, people on the ground. Notice on television the people that the camera skims past in order to catch the sensational or the high profile. Pray that we might see with our Creator's eyes. Amen. Touch our hearts that we may know compassion from failing embers build a blazing fire love strong enough to overturn injustice to seek a world more gracious come touch and bless our hearts come touch our souls that we Dispel. Create a space for spirits to grow in us. Let life and beauty fill us. Come touch and bless our souls. Come touch our minds and teach us how to reason. Set free our thoughts to wonder and to dream. Help us to open doors of understanding, to welcome truth and wisdom. Come touch and bless our minds. Minute for Right Relations, Indigenous Day of Prayer, June 2021. Indigenous Day of Prayer, the Sunday before National Indigenous Peoples Day, June the 21st, this past week, was an opportunity to celebrate First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples' values, customs, languages, and culture. Although these groups share many similarities, they each have their own distinct heritage, language, cultural practices, and spiritual beliefs. In 1971, the observance of June the 21st as a National Indigenous Day of Prayer was formally recognized by the United Church of Canada at the 24th General Council. This date was chosen because it is near or on the date of the summer solstice, part of many First Nations spiritual and cultural celebrations. This day is an opportunity to learn about the people who were here thousands of years before any settlers came and to act in supporting the rights and sovereignty of all indigenous peoples. Joining in the celebrations across Canada is a wonderful way to learn more about indigenous peoples and culture in your area.
This past Monday, I and some dear friends from St. Andrews met at the Apology Cairn. We read the story of that apology here in Sudbury, and we prayed together at the Cairn. It was an emotional time for me. You still can celebrate Indigenous culture in many ways. Prepare a traditional Indigenous recipe with your children or grandchildren. Share music with your family by Indigenous musicians and singers. Read a book, a child's or an adult's, by an Indigenous author. The Right Relations Team's summer reading list can be found here at Right Relations Reading List. The Manitou Intentional Learning Community, MILK, and the Canadian Shield Right Relations Resource Team have created a resource called A Pilgrimage for Reconciliation, a resource that shares the history of the apology to First Nations, peoples, the apology cairn, calls to action, and much more. A Pilgrimage for, a pilgrimage for Reconciliation, it is posted on our St. Andrews website. The Indigenous Solitary Team of the North Bay and Area United Church Mission Cluster created a service of worship inspired by water. We will include the email at the end of this service. I'm now going to invite forward our Chair of Council and, uh, and Roger and Malone for a very special presentation on behalf of a very grateful congregation. Thank you, Dave. It's my great privilege to be here today to make this very special presentation. During our celebration of gifts time, as we move towards our shared summer service season, we thought it would be appropriate to celebrate the contributions of two of our many volunteers. Now, I could spend the entire service today telling you about the work of all of our volunteers and the wonderful work that they share on behalf of our church. And we want to take this moment to thank them for their many contributions, as well as our dedicated staff our minister, and our office manager. But at this time, today, we thought it would be especially important to acknowledge Roger Pyle and Malone Appianning for their work. Roger and Malone, for the better part of the past year and every week since January, you have been our dedicated sound booth team, without whom our services could not have been recorded and broadcast. Roger, through your research and your leadership, you have moved us along ensuring that members of our church family are able to worship wherever they are. And Malone, through your technical abilities, you have also ensured that members of your church family, including your family in Ghana now, are able to worship with us wherever they are. Together, your efforts have meant that everyone has shared in high quality worship experiences, and we offer our, uh, our special thanks for your dedication and commitment, especially over the past six months. Thank you. I have a, a small token of our esteem from the church after I put my mask on. I'd love to shake your hands. I'd love to give you a hug, but obviously I'm not going to be able to do that today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yay! Thank you for doing that, Ralph, and thank you again. That was me cheering in the background for Malone and Roger. So grateful. It feels like a ballet we have up here. As people move, they have blocking so we don't get too close to each other. Masks on, masks off. I want to say to you at home, 
thank you so much for being with us today. And those of you who have been with us through the whole journey, thank you for supporting the church locally, St. Andrew's United Church, but also globally through mission and service. Those, those arms of God and of Christ are so important to care for our community, but also to care for our world. So thank you. And if you're thinking about supporting us, please consider it. And we have a wonderful way of doing it called PAR, where you can give through debit or through your uh, credit card. Um, there are different ways to contribute. All you have to do is reach out to us and we will find a way to work with uh, the gifts that you have so that you can share them as fully as you can so we can all be part of this community of Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Roger and Malone. Thank you, Ralph, who we don't know, uh, does so much work as well behind the scenes. We are so gifted. Let us pray. Loving God, accept these gifts that we bring. May they be a symbol of our desire and commitment to play our part in the unfolding of your story and your love. God, accept ourselves and all of our gifts. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank you, Ralph, again, for your beautiful music, Ralph McIntosh. Now, during this prayer, I am going to, um, I am going to use an action. You're invited to share it, or just as you are, as you pray normally. But when I say, oh God, hear our prayers, I'm going to lift my hands up a little bit, and then, or you could lift them up a lot. And then when I say, hear our cry, put your hands down. It's as if we are lifting our prayers to God who loves us so much. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for the beauty of life, for creation, and we within creation, the canvas on which you paint rainbow colors. Thank you for every goodness in our lives. We are truly grateful for your presence within and around us, for the freedoms we share, and for opportunities that lie before us. We offer first our prayers for ourselves and for our world. God, hear our prayers. Hear our cry. We pray for an end to violence in homes, our homes perhaps, in our communities and between the nations of our beloved earth. In this moment of silence, I invite you to remember out loud or quietly those in the world where there is violence.
God, hear our prayers and hear our cry. We pray for those who are struggling to resist evil, promote justice, those whom we know about, and those who struggle silently without our knowledge. Let us remember in the silent moment, remember the moment, uh, remember those whose faith and conviction compel them to struggle, and often, like that woman in the Bible story, take great risk. God, hear our prayers. Hear our cry. We pray for those suffering in mind or body or spirit, for those who mourn and those who are facing death. Let us remember as the Spirit might move us, those who suffer wherever they may be, and God, I include among them the people in Saskatchewan of the Coessis, First Nation, and people of First Nations across this country and those who grieve right now. God, hear our prayers. Hear our cry. We pray for our Mother Earth and for all those who are acting on her behalf. May their actions be fruitful May they bring healing and wholeness to all of creation, not just one piece of it. Now in silence, we remember all who are brave, committed, the many heroes who na whose names we may never know. God, hear our prayers hear our cry. We offer to you all the prayers, all the people that we are concerned about, holding them up in prayer as well, in silence. From the depth and the sincerity of our hearts, we pray. In the name of the healer, Jesus. Amen. Again, thank you 
Ralph, for your music today. What a blessing that has been. <laughs> and, and for Malone and Roger, who think on their toes, thank you very much as well. One other thank you I want to offer, and that is to many of you that have responded after our last service, the uh, service uh, lifting up Indigenous uh, culture and the challenges. Thank you for all your comments, for your comments on YouTube. Uh, remember that you can make a comment, type a comment into the YouTube uh, channel to let us know what you think. And even if it's something that you'd like to see, we would love to hear from you. So thank you for those. Thank you for the comments by email, letting us know when you're touched and we appreciate it very much. And that's a way we can always connect. I hope to see you at the virtual picnic in a few minutes. Now will you join with me in the blessing? Again, it is responsive and the words are on screen. Go now where you find friends and neighbors, as well as family and strangers. We will, we will share, share that, that never-ending never love of, of the healer, healer of all. Go now with that faith which dares to touch the outcast, with hearts that break for the pain of others. We, we will, will share, share the compassion, compassion of the friend, the friend of the broken. broken. Go now, carrying word and wonder to a weary world, waiting in silence for the songs of hope to sing to all creation. We will, we will follow, follow the dryer of, of tears wherever, wherever we, we are, are led. led. Amen. Amen. Sustain 